Hi YouTube, this is Evie. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all. Today I'm going to be talking about wax play. I'm going to be going over everything involved with wax play. I'm talking about wax play scenes, types of wax, types of candles, all of that stuff. So if that sounds like something you guys are interested in, please stick around. And first things first, I'm going to be talking about types of candles and types of wax. I think it's really important and it goes very closely along with safety. Not all wax is the same. Not all wax burns at the same temperature. Ideally, you're going to want something that burns between about 110 and 130 degrees. That is sort of the acceptable safe zone. Now, everybody has a different tolerance with wax and temperature play in general. Some people, especially like really heavy paint bodies, people who are really masochistic, are going to want something a little bit hotter, somewhere between the 130 to 145 range. No, this is not to say that everybody is that way, everybody can be that way. Your skin does burn after a certain temperature, that is just a biological fact, no matter what your actual pain tolerance is. And obviously, even if you know somebody is a really he heavy pain bottom, don't just start out by like making sure you're using the hottest wax available, because even though they're a really heavy pain bottom when it comes to being hit with a paddle or a whip, maybe they have a, a lot of issues with temperature, like maybe just having their hands on an ice cube just makes them squeal, for example. So you never really know for sure what somebody's going to be able to tolerate, so take that into account. Start slowly. Start it with a low temperature wax. Some things that make wax temperatures different is primarily going to be if the candle is scented, the type of candle, and the uh, height from which it is dropped. So when you are looking for a candle, I would recommend getting something that is pure paraffin or pure soy. So for example, this is one of the candles that I have. This is a pure paraffin candle. It has been dyed black. I think there are some misconceptions around dyes increasing the temperature of the wax itself. That is not true, but it does depend slightly on the type of dye that is being used generally. If it is a candle that is made specifically for wax play, in something that has dye in it won't actually increase the temperature by a noticeable amount. You can also get pure soy. Um, really, there's not that much of a difference between the two in terms of temperature. I have seen places generally advertise soy as being between 110 and 130, and then paraffin being slightly higher at you know 120 to 130. So somewhere around that range, they tend to be similar. There's really no way to know for sure what temperature a wax is burning at because there are so many different factors. There's the type of candle, there's how long it's been burning, all that stuff. So the only way to really know for sure is to actually like completely melt the candle and like use a candy thermometer and measure it that way. But really it doesn't matter, you know, if it's 135 or 125. The thing to do is just do a test patch. And you can do that by just burning the candle, and this is this is for the dom, this is for the top to do on themselves, is to burn the candle, have a little bit of wax pulled up, and then pour it on their arm and test the temperature that way. They should do it both at two feet and at six inches, because one of the big things, again, that changes the temperature of the candle is how far away it is dripped onto the body. And I'll get more into the actual, like, technicalities of doing a wax play scene in a moment, but first I want to finish talking about the different types of candles and wax. So in addition to soy and paraffin candles, uh, which you can primarily get from specific dealers and people on Etsy, places like that, that actually make candles for wax play, but if you go to a store, if you go to like a grocery store or even like a health food store and you try to get a candle from them, Primarily, it's going to be beeswax or it's going to be something scented. It's going to be a mix of a bunch of different like oils and other things you maybe don't necessarily want to have in your body. And they burn really, really hot. They burn definitely outside the safe zone. Typically, with your store-bought scented candles or beeswax candles, you're looking at 145 to 165. And you also have to worry about the additional fact that a lot of these candles, in particular like jar candles, ones that come in glass containers, have to do with a problem called hot spots, which is where different portions of the wax are burning at different temperatures. So overall the wax might be 145, but then at certain points it might be like 180, and that is not good. You don't want that. That will cause a burn.
Now, in terms of different kinds of shapes of candles, there's a few to pick from. Um, this is just a standard pillar candle. I like these because these are designed sort of to burn sort of a hole around the edges, but not all the way out to the edge, because otherwise the wax will spill down to allow the wax to pull up. You can also get taper or uh, you can get taper candles, which are very like look like tapers. They're very kind of like long and then they get thinner at one end and they're sort of thicker at the other end. This is used for example when somebody is in bondage and particularly with shibari and the top is binding them up with rope and then either sticks a candle into the rope to drip on them once the tie has been completed or for the top to drip over them once they've actually been tied up all the way. So you can play with those both in two different ways. There are a bunch of different ways to actually do wax play and I think taper candles and pillar candles kind of lend themselves to two different methods. One method is the pooling method which is what I would use this pillar candle for which is where you let it melt for a little bit first. You get that sort of rim around the edge where there's still a layer of solid wax but then most of it is melted on the inside to actually like hold the wax in and you can kind of uh, stream it out a bit more whereas if you're dealing with a taper candle you are basically just dripping it onto the body as it melts. Additionally you can also find votive candles which are very similar to pil pillar candles but shorter uh, and these again come in all different shapes and sizes. I know people who make pillar candles that are narrower than this but longer. Ones that are the same diameter but longer. You know all different shapes and sizes. What one that you want to use is kind of up to your own ideal wax placing. Something else to keep in mind as well is that a lot of people do have temperature sensitivities and they also have fragrance sensitivities and they have dye sensitivities. And you may or may not know this beforehand, so if you're getting started in wax plate, particularly if you're a top and you're going to be providing the wax for your scene, I recommend investing in just some plain undyed soy and paraffin candles. That way you have an option between different submissives. If they do have any sensitivities related to fragrance or, or scent or anything like that, some people are also allergic to soy, so that makes paraffin a good choice, some people are sensitive to paraffin so that makes soy a good choice and vice versa. Now something else that I have heard people do if they have plain white candles and they want to add a bit of color is they actually will melt Crayola candles into the wax which is not something that I've personally tried so I can't recommend it and that sounds like something you want to do because again and maybe if you're into DDLG and the idea of like having candles um, melted on you that are made out of Crayola sounds interesting totally go for it and it definitely allows you to get a lot wider variety of colors than maybe what you can find standard um, I think the most common colored candle you find is red but I know people that will make custom colored candles as well but if you're at home and you're in a DIY kind of mood you can try that out. Again, that's something I've tried, so I can't personally recommend it, but I do know that it is something that people do. Now, when it comes to actually setting up a wax play scene, there's a couple of different methods, and it will depend kind of on the nature of the scene. I think wax play lends itself very well to a very sensation-based form of play, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. So a few different methods you could use. One, if you're using pillar candles, I'd recommend lighting at least two of these at the same time so that way you can alternate between the two and let the wax pull up in one while you're using the other and back and forth. Uh, if you're using a taper candle then you would just light it and let it burn and drip over the submissive. That is a lot I think slower and more central way to do it whereas this can be I don't necessarily want to say more extreme but it does uh, put more wax on the submissive's body at one particular time. Another thing that you can do if you are the kind of person who is very gung-ho about wax and wants to get wax all over their body because they really, really want to, what you can do is you can take multiple candles or you can take one whole entire candle, it kind of depends on you know how much you're doing with it, and actually put it in a crock pot and completely melt it in the crock pots. So then you have a you know, complete pool of wax you can do from and then use a ladle and like spoon it over the submissive that way. Obviously don't take a ladle full and like dump it out on them. And besides just using the ladle you can also uh, use a brush. One thing also that I should note before this is a lot of people like to actually sort of pre-oil the body before they do wax play where they're actually going to be doing the wax play scene at. People will use things like petroleum jelly, people will use things like massage oil. I'd recommend just using either a plain oil like almond oil or dojibo oil to kind of prep the body first. This helps sort of create a layer uh, between the wax and the body. This makes cleanup easier and it also helps prevent some burns. 
And additionally, when you are actually getting set up for this scene, make sure that you have some water on hand, just either a damp cloth or a glass of water or something. And that's for two reasons. One, if the submissive experiences any burns during the course of the scene, it's generally a good idea to put something damp and cool on their skin. This will depend on the severity of the burn. If you have a really, really bad burn, like 200 degree accidentally kind of burn, don't do that, that's bad. I would highly recommend before you do this, because this is edge play, that you have a first aid kit set up, that you go to first aid classes, that you know how to deal with burns because it is a risk factor. Generally, the worst you're going to experience if it does happen is going to be kind of a sunburn-like experience rather than like your skin like blisters and bleeds and like pops open. Like that would be gross and hopefully it won't happen to you. And if it does, they have definitely used the wrong kind of wax. The other thing you need to be worried about besides burns is it's very reasonable, especially if you have a taper or a pillar candle and are not using the crock pot method, that you will drop this candle. It is a thing. It will happen. And it sucks. But it's a factor and it could happen, so be prepared. Normally, if I am text if I am testing wax out on myself for the first time, which is what I did with this candle, I actually do it sitting on my bathroom floor because it's completely tile and there's also a sink right next to me. So if I drop it, I am going to be dropping it on a tile floor, which isn't going to set on fire. But, you know, if it were to, like, roll out into my living room for some weird reason and set the carpet on fire, which, hope to God, that never happens because I live in a rental and let's not go there. Um... <laughs> Uh, I have a sink and I can get water right away and it'd be really easy to fix. The idea here is not to like pour as much wax as humanly possible, to do it at the hottest temperature humanly possible. You're not going to get any wards, you're not going to get any ribbons, nobody's going to be impressed. Like, just do what makes you feel good with the wax and make the kind of waxing that you want. Don't just do it to, like, try and impress other people and, like, you know, you know, he poured an entire candle, like, down my vagina. Like, no, that's bad. Don't do that. And speaking of that, there are a few places on the body where you should not put wax, namely the face. Unless you have extremely good aim and you have a candle that you know doesn't splatter, if you get it on your eyes, on your lips, any of the soft tissue around the face, that is going to be burning. That is going to be very bad. Don't go there. Any of the submissive has their eyes closed and they have a blindfold on and it's all like sensual and stuff. Like, you could still cause them to go blind. So just don't do it, okay? Just, just don't risk blindness for cake, guys. That's all I'm going to say. Besides the face and all of that stuff, I would also recommend not doing it over any piercings, especially if they're fresh piercings for obvious reasons. Don't do it over the genitals unless you are extremely experienced and you know that's what you want. Some people like to do wax as a form of chastity, which sounds weird, but what happens is people will pour a lot of wax over very parts of their genitalia and seal it off until it gets removed by a knife or fingers or whatever and that can be a form of chastity that way if that is what you are up to and also be careful to make sure that you're not pouring too much wax in one location especially if it hasn't solidified yet because that will again create a hot spot and it will make the sensation way more intense than it would be just dripping on a single place and one location at one time, if that makes sense. Uh, so make sure it isn't pulling up too much. You can kind of experiment with that as you get into wax play scenes more and you have an idea of what your tolerance level is like. Uh, wax play, again, it can be a, a sensation thing. It can also be an artistic thing. People do a lot of art with wax play. It can be an element of rope bondage, for example. Like I talked about earlier, there's so many different directions that you can take wax play in, as long as you keep those sort of basic safety precautions in mind. Now something that's interesting and something that I think is really important to know is once you've actually poured the wax on somebody's body, that doesn't have to be the end of the scene. You can totally mix this with a bunch of other stuff, and not just with rope bondage. You can mix with other kinds of temperature play. You could experiment, for example, with after the wax has been applied and your skin is all warm, putting ice cubes over it and kind of experiencing that difference in sensation. And the actual removal process itself can be an extension of the scene. There are a bunch of different ways you can remove the wax. You can use a sharp knife if you're in too 
uh, that kind of thing, and you have experience doing that kind of thing, uh, you could take it off with claws or your fingernails, you could take it off with vampire gloves, uh, you could chip it off, you could use a wooden or a dull knife, basically it will depend on what kind of sensation you're looking for. Again, keep in mind that with wax, because of the fact that it is so hot and it has adjusted the temperature of the surface of your body, there's going to be more blood at the surface and you're going to experience sensations a bit more intensely that way. Also, if you are a heavy pain bottom, you can do things like uh, cut it off with a knife. Like, not just like, oh, like, little butter knife, like, but like, if that makes sense with like, you know, a razor blade or, or something. Uh, you can have it be whipped off. You can flog it off. There are so many different ways you can take off wax. It sort of extends the longevity of the scene. Keep in mind that this can be a messy process. If you're worried about staining sheets, which you should be, uh, you can lay down a plastic tarp, an old blanket, something that you're not worried about getting wax on. Generally, um, at least when I've used candles like these, I have not had problems taking them off and like having residue left over unless I don't realize that the wax is at that particular spot. Uh, keep in mind as well when you are dripping the wax that you're not accidentally getting it where it doesn't need to be so if you are doing it on a surface and it's uncovered make sure that you have really good aim and you're paying attention to where you're dripping the wax on so that way you don't have to worry about you know going to the dry cleaners and you know, taking your bed sheet there and having to explain why it's covered in candle wax also as well along with that you want to make sure that those places that I mentioned before, like namely the genitals, fresh piercings, and the face, you are not accidentally dripping into those places because you can have every intention of very delicately and lovingly putting candle wax on somebody's ass and then it accidentally slips down into their labia. I've had that happen and it really, really hurts and it's it's not, it's not a good time, guys. Just don't don't do it and avoid it at all possible. But yeah, that is basically everything that there is to be said about wax play. Just use your imagination, get some fun colors, go shopping with your partner, look, look at wax online. I will put links down below to some different stores that I recommend you buy wax from. I highly, highly, highly recommend shopping online for wax or going to a local BDSM store if you have one to get wax. If at all possible, go to someone who custom makes wax and not like those cheap like Doc Johnson like body candles because even though they're marketed for wax play chances are they are not going to be burning at the right temperature and they're going to stain and be hard to remove and all that jazz uh, but I have a few stores that I would recommend you guys go to also again do not get beeswax do not get beeswax do not get beeswax but yeah, that's all I have to say. So if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, stories about wax play, video suggestions, any of that stuff, please feel free to leave it in the comments down below. I love hearing from you all. If you guys want to find links to anything that I mentioned in this video, as well as related videos, my Patreon, my social media, all of that jazz, please open up the description box if you want to see more. And until I see you next time, have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.